Namaskar and welcome to this exciting episode of Sathology Debunking Mythology. Sathology means science of truth, the study of truth. Opposite to that is mythology, which means science of study of fake life or imagination. Please forgive me in advance that I repeat every show this definition because many people who join new and they have to understand, stop using the word mythology for Ramayana, Mahabharata, and the entire Vedic history, including Purana, Upanishad. You may not have proof. There are a lot of proofs you don't have. You don't ask your mother and father a DNA report to prove that you are their children. You believe in that. You know, this proof is already there because the mother has said it. You know, I have a very, very special guest today. You all always know him. He's no longer a guest now. He's a co-host, you can say. So is Rishi Muni. I give him all kinds of adjectives because he really is. You know, he is, he practices, he teaches his family, his wife, everyone is deeply involved in that. Let us welcome Sri Nilesh Nilkant Oak. Namaskar Aditya Ji. <laughs> Namaskar. And let me make a comment on what you said, how you, uh, when you begin the program, how you repeat that standard line about sathology. It is a well-studied, well-researched and very effective tradition from uh, Indian civilization that is also uh, imbibed by world civilizations, but not as much as it is there in uh, Indian context or, or not Indian context by, by developed by Indian civilization. The word that is used is Parayan, just like Bhagavata, Srimad Bhagavat Parayan, Japa, you know, repeating the same name. And it has a very important critical scientific value it's like to i was the other day i was talking to um, iit professor uh, of engineering of course you know because iit these days has humanities departments too <laughs> so need to need to distinguish and uh, we we talked about this the, the importance of parayan and uh, what it does to you it's like a self talk in a different way you know is to make yourself aware of it so what you do is absolutely has a very deep tradition and it's a well-established, well-researched method that the parayan, the repetition is very, very critical. Thank you. Sometimes, you know, our Kaluga brains makes us forget. Like I, I, when I'm sitting alone, I remember so many shloka and I can quote to myself again and again. But when it comes to in any public gathering, some shloka come. Some, hmm. And the science is also spoken by many people. It is a Paramatma who guides you to speak sometimes. You know, either you prepare and I really don't prepare because I read all the time. So, but very sometimes it happens. Like yesterday, I was in one uh, Marine Corps meeting and I was invited as a guest as of for one of my books called the Hindu Bible. Hmm. That book calls me everywhere. Hmm. So, and it's Bhagavad Gita, just the name is the Hindu Bible. So, the the only one thing came out of my mouth was jatunasam I said that for a soldier, it is very important to remember that there is never a time the soul never existed, nor it will never in future also. So American soldiers should be fearless to fight. Yes. Because the church has told them one life syndrome, <laughs> which makes them scared what will happen to their children, what will happen to their wife. I said, if you have that fear, you cannot protect because the fear is there, you know, the, and the yoga can remove that fear. And then suddenly the funny question happened. One of the marine officers asked me, so how is Bangladesh? Hmm. And I said, what is, where is Bangladesh? I said, Bangladesh, I mean, in what context? Because I'm from India. Hmm. So he said, isn't the capital of India is Bangladesh? <laughs> and he's, he's an officer saying. Yeah. You know, this is the so much little these guys know about other countries, and which is a problem for them because yeah. they when they go out and distribute chocolates and they get born <laughs> torn by the IDs, then it is a problem of ignorance. Uh, and no, and two days back, Fox News anchor Tucker Carlson was taking an interview, and uh, he asked one show host Emily, and I can take their names because they are media personalities. Uh, the the she asked, what is the capital of Canada? She said, hmm. she said, Ontario. Hmm. You know? So she, she got Indian, the O right. She got o the right. O part right. <laughs> That's the positivity. You are seeing the yeah. positive side of <laughs> the situation. 
So Nileshi, like you and I are living in this country and we know the general IQ level here. So what is your <clears throat> take on that how little Americans know about the world, forget about themselves? Uh, well, I would uh, un I would universal universalize that question. Uh, of course, I'll talk about the Americans. We are in America and that way we care for America. You know, in I mean, just like a Janma Bhumi, Karma Bhumi. So we are here. So, of course, we want the America to be in a good place. And it's in a very turbulent place right now. You know, I mean, where is the leadership and what the leadership says? I mean, lots of issues. Uh, this, so IQ, you put it as an IQ. I would put it as uh, people's focus. What are they focused on? Okay, because, uh, and I'll come to that, but what they are focused on. So the focus is not in the right place. Focused is on the TikTok. Focused is on something else, you know, like instant uh, instant glory, how to be in an instant limelight. That's why these deep issues are forgotten. Frankly, I mean, what you bring up is very interesting. Frankly, you may say, I mean, somebody doesn't remember or doesn't know the capital of India or doesn't know the capital of Canada by itself. It's not like a big problem or something. But when these same people, that itself is not a problem. I will tell you, I'll, I'll always uh, connect that with my favorite subject of Mahabharata. I'll come to that and Mahabharata researchers. But the point is that by itself, not knowing is not a problem. But pretending now these same people, if they start, so you mention a military commander or you mention a famous TV anchor or TV personality who will talk about the geopolitics. OK, so guys, for geopolitics, I mean, if you are trying to understand, say, India, you have to understand India on India's terms. Now, you may still give your American perspective of it, but if you don't understand India on India's terms, you are actually not going to understand India's politics. You're not going to understand India's problems and just giving those chocolates to uh, kids on the street or people in, say, ragged clothes. And therefore, you making a judgment is going to be as dubious as, say, people in India making a judgment about Americans. Uh, or Western Europeans, as long as they put a tie suit, three-piece suit and something like this, suddenly, oh, this person must be intelligent. This person must be knowledgeable. You know, that's like a misunderstanding. It is the same thing. The person from here looking at somebody in a ragged cloth, ragged clothes, you know, in India, I'll tell you, I'm guilty of that. Like, you know, I, I mean, these perceptions you build without even realizing it. I was in, I was in uh, Jabalpur. This is going back 2016. And I was surrounded like at a conference for World Ramayana conference. I was surrounded by, uh, say, 10 people in ragged clothes, ragged clothes. You know, you can you can just like exactly that same thing. And, you know, I mean, in my mind and I, that's why I'm admitting I'm guilty of that. Uh, so when they said they said, why would they even be interested in me? You know, like because uh, there were many people from uh, outside India and these people were very excited taking photos with them and so on. But they were very excited taking photos with me. And I'm saying, well, I look like just like another Indian, you know, more from a village guy. And what would be their motivation? And, you know, when they're talking to me, they said yesterday and the newspapers and the local uh, organization, uh, the conference team had done a great job before our talk. So if I'm talking on the Tuesday in the Monday newspaper, they had talked about my background and some article on me, which even I had not known or seen. So these people had read that. But to go further, we, folks in absolutely ragged clothes, uh, they were talking about my research work. I mean, I was flabbergasted. I was shocked. I mean, it's like falling to the ground. I said, what are, so maybe they read in the newspaper and that's, they admitted. <clears throat> then the person said, said, let me tell you and to please tell me if I, my understanding is correct. And this person went on talking about uh, all the fame, all the, important subjects of Mahabharata we have discussed. And again, it was another shock because when every so-called known uh, Indic researcher, Indic speaker pretends or actually the reality that they don't understand my work. And, you know, I, I, I'm not saying that they pretend. Actually, either they pretend or they actually truly don't understand. In both cases, it <laughs> explains their IQ. But I'm talking about the IQ of the folks in the ragged clothes on the streets of Jabalpur. And they knew. I mean, I, I was just so fascinated when the person explains, say, take Arundhati Vasishta, but many others. 
And I said, wow, the way you explain, I don't need to add even a single word of explanation. And other people are also excited. I said, oh, yeah, yeah, please, please. Can you explain it again? They're asking me. I said, why should I explain? He has explained it so beautifully. I said, can you explain that again to the crowd? Or I said, anyone in the crowd, somebody else who has understood what he said, can you repeat? And actually, it was a conference, I'm telling you, Aditya Ji, on the streets of Jabalpur, just outside Manas Bhavan for an hour. Actually, I asked one individual to record it, like one of the journalists to record it, but uh, I missed, uh, I mean, I forgot his name or the contact and I never got that video. But back to you. So I think we can go with many of these biases, like, you know, we can make a quick judgment based on people's hairstyle and clothes and uh, their accent and uh, their English. Like India is like filled with uh, inferiority complex uh, against the uh, English right uh, see in america i mean that's the beauty of america i will say and i'll stop i digressed already uh, here people are so patient with different accents okay that in Amer in india somebody uses somebody makes a mistake while speaking english the mid mediocre middle class i'm going to say mediocrity when it comes to and the inferiority when it comes to english yeah they will immediately laugh at that person you won't see that in america you won't see that in canada but back to you You know, you made some very important points here and I'll I'll leave it to the segue to Mahabharat, actually, which is your pet topic, which you said just now. And Mahabharat and Ramayana, they are also my pet topics, but not in the field which you work in. And believe me, uh, viewers, I learn a lot from, because Nilesho gives Tark, Vitark from different angles, which is really helpful. And, in, and there are so many news items go on. They are all t temporary. They are current only. But Mahabharat Ramayana is permanent. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can get permanent inspiration from any episode of Mahabharat, any small yeah. conversation. And believe me, Mahabharat is a series of conversations. And the beauty is in paying attention to those conversations. Like, and that's how they teach you Veda. Uh, you know, which is a very, uh, very uh, scientific way of teaching you Veda because, uh, because Mahabharat is written for common people, ordinary people. Is not written. Ved, for Veda, you have to understand Indra first. Otherwise, you will not understand Vedic Veda. Because Indra, without in, Indra, and then, and once you start abusing Indra, <laughs> then there is no hope of Veda. Because right. there, there is nothing in there. So, coming back to Mahabharata researchers also now. Yeah. Most of the Mahabharata researchers have no faith in Vyasdev itself. I mean, as Vyasdev, they considered Vyasdev as a ordinary rishi like or muni like people like who have become vyasdev by meditation you know? you know such some places some positions are brought from top down like like if prime minister or president of any country has to guide a committee he's going to send his person out there mm. so similarly mahabharat ramayana are meant to guide the humanity so they somebody top which is brahma has to send people down or Shivji has to invite people down. So what do you have to say on that? And then you'll move on to you. Yeah, quickly. So no, I, I mean, you gave me a good, you gave me a good segue for that. Uh, you said Mahabharat is for uh, ordinary people. I agree with that. Now, of course, the Vasudeva's definition of ordinary could be very different than what you and me think, you know, <laughs> <What's> ordinary, <laughs> <That's right. laughs> not, what ordinary is. That is one. The second one is, it is for ordinary people. I agree. And that is the only way you are going to understand Vedas. You know, Vedas in a true sense, in a way, practical way, how to use it in practice. The second aspect is that, but there are folks who think of themselves as extraordinary. You said, you know, many don't have a faith in Vyasa, but they will pretend to be the Mahabharata experts or, you know, like Mahabharata as their main subject. You, you will also find they don't trust the... Grantha, Mah Grantha Mahabharat. I mean, Mahabharat Grantha. That is the way, like not trusting Vasa. But I'm saying Vasa might have written something. And, you know, they have these very wide assumptions uh, that, oh, the Grantha that they have has uh, seen additions forever, which is a utterly Western, European, Western Indologist, uh, nonsensical speculation with no evidence. Any Grantha gets additions. So Mahabharata Ramayana is not an exception. Any Grantha gets Pathabhed. 
if Rugveda also you can see that even you know there are something which is called prakshipta. Prakshipta not in the sense not part of Rugveda. There are some variations. If you take Purusha Sukta, Purusha Sukta has a variations when you with the way it is given in uh, one Veda versus another. That is not seen as a problematic. But to these folks, only when they are caught, only when they are shown their stupidity, they will take a comfort or they will try to hide under this stupid argument that Mahabharata has seen many additions, uh, many additions. Well, yes, Mahabharata has some additions. So is, Ma so is uh, Ramayana, uh, everything. And we can identify the beauty is Mahabharata, Ramayana itself has given enough of the clues, enough of the tools within the text itself to identify these anomalies, identify these interpolations. And we'll talk about some of these. But the one point I wanted to add is it is for ordinary people, but there are some folks, Mahabharata researchers, they think themselves they are extraordinary. In reality, they are only extra and ordinary. Okay. And they, they create this uh, confusion. I'll, I'll, as we as we talk about it, uh, I'll actually give you one example of it uh, right here. Although we are going to talk about a totally different subject. Uh, so so we'll should begin. I begin? Or? Yes, please. Yeah, okay. All right. So today's subject and uh, while I open up, you can talk about it, but it's a very exciting subject. We are taking another chapter from history. This goes back uh, even before Ramayan, Trishanku was a Ikshvaku Vamsha king long time before Ramayan. We don't know exactly how long before uh, Rama's time. Now, Rama's time, we all know it's 14,000, more than 14,000 years ago, 12,209 BCE to be specific. Naturally, it's a long time before uh, Mahabharata. Now, this king. And the Vishwamitra of his time, remember, there are many Vishwamitra, many Vashishta. Okay. Uh, it's a title, you know, in a dynasty, you can say dynasty in the sense in the Brahmana Vamsha, Brahmana Parampara, mm -hmm. a disciplic succession, but also a genetic succession, a combination of both. So Trishanku, uh, his uh, sage, you know, with, with a Parampara of a Vashishta Rushi, but also Vishwamitra Rushi. Just was the case in the Rama's time. Same is the case in Trishanku's time. So the reason I mention Aditya Ji is many people are getting Vishwamitra, how that happened and how did he live that long? You know, people don't listen. <laughs> there are many individuals with this name. We also have a Valmiki Vishwamitra Vasishta in the Mahabharata times. We have all of them in the Ramayana times and we have them before. Uh, Trishanku, Vishwamitra and a Pratisrushti. Okay. Now, uh, I slightly modified the second statement. You know, Sir Karl Popper says science begins with the myths and the criticism of the myths. Again, he is using the word myths because that's what the West is used to. And to the West, other than Bible, everything is a myth. So even the Greek records, uh, Roman records, any other ancient records, of course, the Chinese and Indians, Egyptian, they all consider myths, which is their problem. They have to deal with it. Okay, They have created their own mess. It is for Indians to wake up and not get into that stupidity, not get stuck into that stupidity. But again, as I said, um, the so-called Mahabharata researchers, extraordinary thinking Mahabharata researchers who are only extraordinary, they will, uh, otherwise they will quote from Mahabharata. But when they are shown the mirror and shown what kind of stupid narrations they are building, then they hide under this uh, interpolation, and Parthaved and so on. But Parthaved are their interpolations are there. Talk about them upfront, how you are going to deal with them when you come across a multiple uh, narrations like Parthaved and then deal with it. We will we will discuss this today, Aditya Ji, how a multiple narrations can come, how the information is not always sufficient. But what we know that Trishanku is described, of course, discussed in Ramayana, which is kind of thankful and interesting, but of course is a Kshwaku dynasty. Even in Mahabharata, it is discussed while passing, but doesn't matter whether you look at the evidence from Trish, uh, Ramayana, evidence from Mahabharata or Puranas, for the research purpose, like scientific research purpose, it is still extremely limited. Limited like the way we have for Dasharadnya Yuddha, okay, the Sudas and the 10 generations and whatnot. 
and people will also send me uh, notification send me email saying yeah please do the research on dasharad niyadya now one of my good friend you know uh, kshama shelar uh, actually i will ask her if she wants to be on your show aditya ji it will be great uh, for her to discuss uh, dasharad niyadya she has written a book dasharad niyadya extremely limited evidence is available in spite of that what she has done is a marvel okay uh, but back to this the similar situation exists for trishanku mm -hmm. in spite of everyone uh, knowing the story of a trishanku the information that can be used in a objective way is very limited so i want to give that background in that context we are trying to understand what that pratisrushti is what is the experiment of vishwamitra and making an attempt to uh, determine the dating of trishanku in fact all we will be successful is to put the lower limit we will able to say definitely trishanku was before this time and there also i will bring you some extra and ordinary mahabharat researchers how again honestly aditya ji i have no problem when people take my original research and use it in their presentations and use it to communicate i want everyone to do that because it's not about me it's not about that anilesha's research it's about the truth satya na labhas tapasa yesh atma if people are convinced about it then yes they should talk about it and as a proper courtesy they they ought to refer to my name but honestly i do not feel any problem if they never ever refer to my name okay but i'll mention one instance of it i modified sir karl popper statement and i said instead of science begins with the myths i said science begins with ancient narratives and criticism of ancient narratives that includes everything you know all the granta sampada of india but of the ancient world you know around the world whatever has survived uh, the the burning by the abrahamic religions okay and the destruction by abrahamic religions so uh, the modern uh, parallel to this is uh, elon musk's uh, spacex like for example if um, see he wasn't doing it and let's say the space age hasn't come into being the recent one like of last uh, 60 70 years you know 80 years sputnik and then apollo series and so on we would have hardly made any uh, connection with it as much as until the aeroplanes came into being people are always like scoffing and laughing at the uh, pushpak viman now they stop now they say show me the engine like some of the so called uh, sarkari babu scientist in the indian system of last 70 years they say well unless i see the aircraft engine i cannot uh, uh, accept the existence of uh, pushpak viman i say who cares i mean it's like a get lost <laughs> if you don't have the basic basics of scientific acumen if you don't have the basics of logical reasoning it doesn't matter what you think i mean everyone has a right to think remember the freedom of thought that is there and yeah so they can say it, people have to learn not to take such folks seriously so now elon musk is trying different things some people must be getting very excited other people must be laughing at it laughing at him just as a parallel not in a direct comparison or even a indirect comparison think of what elon musk is doing and the kind of reactions he is getting think of that as a, a character of vishwamitra Vishwamitra was going through this purification process uh, I don't know if Elon Musk is doing that or not I mean I know very little about him uh, Vishwamitra was a rajarshi okay and this has happened over generations too and he wanted to become a brahmarshi he became marshi brahmarshi eventually he realized that only vasishta has to call him brahmarshi until then it has no value uh, but the, the for today's story what elon is elon musk is trying to do the put uh, put a man you know like a space tourism that is the uh, story of a trishanku trishanku uh, these are quick two pictures of here and the left side is the menaka you know wing uh, 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 you know trying to seduce uh, vishwamitra okay this is uh, i think uh, raja ravi verma's painting or i could be wrong and on the uh, right side what you are saying is the final situ situation of trishanku to the extent it has become a word now you know hey don't uh, don't put myself in a trishanku position just like you know there is a expression don't be gandhi <laughs> right <laughs> about mahatma gandhi you know like mahatma gandhi did lot of good things but there were some things which were disaster for uh, india 
for the India and Indian politics and Indian situation and especially some of the uh, very fanatic uh, places that have been created surrounding India. Uh, Gandhi in his own limited way but was responsible for it. So don't be Gandhi. Similarly, people will say, don't be uh, in a, don't be Trishanku or don't put myself in a position of a Trishanku. Don't make my Trishanku. The Trishanku has word, the word has become that much familiar in an Indian context. That is that situation of a Trishanku and we'll quickly look at the story. On the left side is a Indra and the right side is a, a Sage Vishwamitra. Trishanku wanted to go to Swarga, Sadeha, you know, Sadeha, uh, what you can say, uh, uh, swar Swargayan, like Ramayan, you know, the journey to Swarga. Uh, by the way, Aditya ji, uh, afterwards, um, after the show, remind me, sometime we'll talk about Santa Tukaram, you know, Sadeha Vaikuntha Gaman or Swarga Gaman and what does that mean and how, why when that interpretation came into being and what does that mean? We can discuss our, our thoughts about it. He wanted to go. First, uh, Trishanku, Again, as I said, he's a Ikshwaku uh, uh, Vamsha king. Long before Rama, so long time before 14,000 years ago, we don't know exactly when, we are going to make some um, inferences. We are going to draw some inferences, but we are not going to get the exact year of uh, Trishanku or anything. All we are going to put is a lower limit, saying hey, definitely Trishanku is before this or very likely before this time. And it is still very ancient. Definitely it's more than 14,000 years ago that I have already given you, uh, more than 12,000 BC. So uh, Trishanku wanted to go Sadeha with this body, wanted to go to Swarga. And so he approached his uh, uh, Purohit, you can say, you know, who was a Vasishta. The Vasishta is connected with uh, Ikshwaku dynasty as a Raja Purohit, Vasishta. And Vasishta said, no, this is not a practical idea. That's not possible. So they Swarga, you cannot go. So give up that idea. So he got angry. The king, you know, the power corrupts. And absolute power corrupts absolutely. He went to sons of Vasishta. And he said, your father is not helping me. Can you help me? And they got angry. Said, Look, our great father has already told you no. And you are still coming and, uh, you know, making us do this. They got angry. They cursed him. We will not go into that story. Okay, uh, but he couldn't go. They also uh, denied, you know, they also said no to it. That is when he approached Vishwamitra. And remember, Vishwamitra is has is very ambitious at that point. Uh, again, to bring the parallels, like many times what happens is, uh, see, we all, we want hundreds and hundreds of uh, dharmic folks doing research, doing activities, doing actions, doing karma yoga of various kinds. Uh, for the, uh, you know, what you call uh, Abhyudaya Nishraya Siddhi, you know, for Abhyudaya, for the prosperity and for the ultimate good. We want these people. But then there are people who don't have that ability, don't have that capability, are not willing to do the tapasya to get that capability and ability, but still pretend or want to be recognized. Okay. That was the situation, although, by the way, don't uh, get me wrong, Vishwamitra was extremely powerful. But remember, he has to not only imbibe the physical or technical expertise, but also has to get the Niti, the Niti Shastra right, okay, in his mind. The Tarka Shastra is right. Is it even a right act? Just because you can do it, just like Elon Musk may be able to send somebody on a march. Is this necessary? Is this useful? In what way it is useful? I'm not saying it's useful or it's not useful. Same thing with Trishanku. But Vishwamitra said, yeah, I take that challenge. I will send you Sadeha to Swarga. That's what Vishwamitra did. And actually, to an extent, Vishwamitra was successful. Remember, we are interpreting uh, based on limited references that we have. So therefore, for precisely for that reason, there can be multiple different interpretations. I am giving you one interpretation. People listening to it should, should, should try to listen to this and say, hey, does this make sense to me? Is it useful to me for whatever they may be working on? If it's not useful, give it up. You know, nobody's holding you to this. That's the beauty of a Sanatana Dharma, freedom of thought. Freedom of thought and also therefore freedom in deciding whether you want to accept or not. Many times, uh, Aditya I say that, my books, people say, well, I don't agree with you. I said, great. The books by 
the Krupa of a Vasudev, Vasudev Krupa Kili and the Krupa of a Valmiki have come out in such a way, even it surprises me, by the way, that they are, they have now become the golden standards, the calibration standards. So when somebody says they did not understand, it is not so much a reflection of the book as much as it is a reflection of their IQ and reflection of their intellect, reflection of their scientific acumen and reflection of their logical reasoning skills. And this is not to put anyone down or anyone up. Sometimes somebody young understands it. Anyways, back to this. So Vishwamitra puts all the efforts. And actually, I mean, in the totality, you may consider that as a failure. But in reality, he was immensely successful. So what did he, what did he, uh, I mean, what did he uh, succeed in? He actually able to just like uh, Elon Musk's rocket that I showed, he actually was successful in sending Krishanku up in the Swarga, up in the sky, you can say. And the, then as the story goes, again, it's open to interpretation. When he reached all the way to the Swarga, Indra just stopped him. He said, no, with this human body, with this body from the Martya Lok, you cannot come to Swarga. You cannot enter Swarga. I cannot make an exception. Okay, you want to be here coming permanently, whatnot. No, I'm going to stop it. So Indra pushes him down. And now Vishwamitra takes this as a challenge. Like who is interfering with my experiment? And uh, Vishwamitra does his things, whatever he can, like an anti-gravity thing, let's say, anti-gravity technology. He says, yeah, I will make sure you won't come down. And therefore, like Trishanku is hanging in between. Okay, that's kind of the summary of a story. It will come with many variations, the way it will come in, say, Ramayana versus some Puranas, and then Kathakar, Pravachankar add their own flavor to it when the story is told, just like I did right now. I might have added something that may not be there in the original text. That is the nature when you do the storytelling, you know, you are trying to uh, bring your comprehension of it. Now, what this all has to do with the history or the technology or the ancient Indian civilization? Well, let's look at through some of the references. In a very uh, short form, practically like two lines, you know, just like one line we say, two lines, the reference comes into uh, Mahabharata. So Ramayana also it is describing, I'm going to quote Ramayana in, in a few minutes. But, and this has happened long time before Ramayana, before Rama's time. So more than 14,000 years ago, this story of Atrishanku Vishwamitra. But whatever it is, it is that important. It is something so significant that it has been preserved by Ramayan, by Sage Valmiki, Rushi Valmiki. But it is also preserved by Bhagwan Vyasadeva. So it also occurs in the end. So therefore, Vaishampayan and his Shisha. So it occurs in the Mahabharata. Two different references. We are going to look at the reference in the uh, left side first. In fact, I could have, uh, I should have hidden the one on the right. Don't look at the one on the right. There I will tell you, uh, Adityaji, the, the, all the fun with uh, extra and ordinary Mahabharata researchers. On the right, on the left side, uh, we have this reference from Adi Parva, the very first Parva of Mahabharata. And I have given you, see, this is this itself. I deliberately quoted one from the critical edition, the first line at the top here. The you know, both numbers happen to be 34 in this case. Um, but this is from critical edition. The other one is from a Gita press. There is a part of it there. The point is the essence of the narration, such a ancient narration, more than 14,000 years ago, is preserved in both the versions, okay, the critical edition of Mahabharata or the Gita press edition. Okay, Ati Nakshatra Vamsashya Kruddho Nakshatra Sampada Prati Shravana Purvani Nakshatrani Sasarjaya. You will see Prati Shravana Purvani, Purvani Nakshatrani Chakaraya. Some word or Chakaranyam Chalokam Vai Kruddho Nakshatra Sampada. But the meaning remains the same. And uh, then what is the context? If somebody reads the first two lines, the person will not know. Of course, there are rhymes, lines before this that tells this is uh, the context of Vishwamitra being discussed. But Guru Shapa Hatasyapi Trishanko Sharanam Dado. So Vasishta gave a shap. 
Okay, Vasishta said, I'm not going to help you. Then Vasishta's son also said no. So he comes to Vishwamitra and now Vishwamitra is uh, helping him. And I told you the story. Vishwamitra sent him up. Went He, he went all the way to the uh, Swarga, like our Elon Musk is trying to get the travel done to Mars, right? Exactly six months, how much time it's required, like that. <laughs> and then Indra said, no, you have to come down. You cannot enter Swarga. And Vishwamitra says, no, I will ensure that you don't fall. And now he's hanging in the middle, upside down. Okay, so that is the description. Uh, so uh, if you, if I can read, उन्होंने ही कुपित होकर दूसरे लोक की सृष्टि की और नक्षत्र संपत्ति से रूठकर प्रति Who is that? उन्होंने विश्वामित्र, सेज विश्वामित्र. So his uh, विश्वामित्र got angry, you know, with this uh, uh, failure, you know, and then he felt that the devatas did not work on his side, of course, including Indra. And with that uh, anger, he created a prati srishti. Okay, with what uh, nakshatra shravan, prati shravana purvani, with shravan as the first nakshatra. That is the description. And uh, Aditi ji, when I thought of this subject, because somebody recently asked me, uh, you know, through in the context of uh, Valmiki Ramayana reading. So hey, what about this prati srishti? And is this something can we see with the telescopes in the sky that Vishwamitra has created? Now, see, remember when you listen to it as like we look at a certain shlok or certain reference and it has many layers of understanding. Someone can take it literally, you know, literally like an obvious uh, surface understanding. By surface, I don't mean trivial. So therefore, this is a very genuine question. Like, hey, what does that mean that? Vishwamitra created a Prati Srishti. Can I see it in the sky? Like which portion of the universe, you know, can I see through the telescope? And jokingly, of course, in responding, I said, well, yeah, I mean, you can see through the telescope. But uh, Aditya Ji, you have a telescope, right? But I said, um, you can actually see with a naked eye too. And, you know, the people were saying, what do you mean? I said, well, you can see with a naked eye and you can see with a telescope. If you see with a telescope, you'll get more magnification. What? Uh, no, Vishwamitra exactly did in a very humble scientific way we said truly we don't know but we can conjecture and that's what I'm going to tell you so essentially this is not like he created another physical universe or something but just like uh, not that long ago 130 years ago there was our standard Panchang like Nirnay Sagar Panchang many people would know that name and uh, Lokmanya Tirak, who was a great scientist, great astronomer, great politician, you know, great uh, student of Vedas, great, le extremely learned, you know, erudite, math great mathematician. He uh, looked at it and he said, you know, some of the Panchang methods that we use in our times are not uh, perfectly matching with what he's seeing, he's seeing in our ancient narrative. So remember, it starts with the criti uh, criticism. It starts with them and a criticism of ancient narrative. So he did that and he created his uh, own Panchanga system, you know, generally goes by the name uh, Tiraka Panchang. My point is he created an alternate Panchang. Now, if you go into that uh, Tiraka Panchang, you find the same nakshatras, but as if like he created a Prati Panchang, now, does that mean he changed the stars in the sky and he's a different sun and different moon? No, he's using the same one, but the method is different. Similarly, uh, Vishwamitra was so angry with the contemporary folks around there, the devatas and everyone, rishis and all that, that he said, you know what, I'm going to create my own system. Okay, so that is that Pratisrishti with the Shravana as the first nakshatra. And this is our clue to possibly understand what could be the timing of Trishanku and that Vishwamitra. Okay, so that's that. We'll come back to this. The second one, now we go to Ashwamedha Parva. And in Ashwamedha Parva, we get a similar reference. And you know, see how people would just jump on it, you know. So, for example, here, Aham Purva Tato Ratri Masa, Shukla Daya Smrta, Shavishtha Dini Rukshani, Rutava Shishira Daya. I'm going to talk briefly, Aditya Ji, about the extra and ordinary Mahabharata researchers here. There is a there is a there is a series of researchers or there are number of Mahabharata researchers, okay, existing today. Who I don't have to tell the names. That's not even required because it's not about those individuals. It is about the lack of scientific acumen, lack of logical reasoning, lack of shraddha 
lack of shraddha and lack of tapasya and i'm going to give you evidence of that so some there are number of uh, mahabharata researchers who take this verse from ashwamedha parva all that they look at is hey it's in the mahabharat that's sufficient for me and they say look the uh, it is said there that the day comes first then night shukla paksha of the month comes first then the krishna paksha or avadya paksha and first nakshatra is a shravan and first rutu is a shishira you know which begins with winter solstice it is given in mahabharat we can use that to decide the timing of mahabharat okay and how do they decide it now see remember sometimes they actually do a utter nonsense with the calculations themselves but other times they will do the right calculations but total foolishness in understanding the reference itself and the context of the reference so here they are taking a random verse i'm calling it random for a reason from ashwamedha parva and the verse is very clear nobody is arguing about it the you know so in some information is given i'll tell you who is saying this to who and what is the context and why these people are wrong wrong in using this verse to decide the timing of mahabharat so first day comes then ratra see this is like explaining uh, a panchang or explaining the sequence of panchang the kala you know discussing the kala and they are saying in that particular context okay shravan nakshatra is the first nakshatra and shishira rutu which is the season that begins with the day of winter solstice is the first rutu you know in whatever scheme of thing therefore i said there can be many schemes vishwamitra started another uh, trivak lokmanya trivak started another okay there are many different systems like that just like we have the foots and pounds and then the meters and kilograms and so on and so forth for the weights and for the distance similarly for the time okay or a panchang okay now what is the problem with using this verse to determining the timing of mahabharat just because it is in the mahabharat does not mean unless you understand the context that it is related to the mahabharat times and i'm going to tell you i'm asserting that it has nothing to do with the mahabharat time itself it is in the mahabharat text it has nothing to do with the mahabharat time okay so what is it there is we have a double delusion what is that double delusion some people again many mahabharat researchers ramayana researchers indian researchers they because of the commonality of the simple word shravana purvani and i don't blame them at least there is some ground for believing this this second part they have said that oh this this shravana as a first nakshatra that was vishwamitra and trishanku time okay they are saying maybe this shravan shravishta shravishta is also name for shravan is also referring to that vishwamitra okay see that is there again so some people even uh, dr p v vartak has quoted these two references as if referring to the story of vishwamitra and trishanku i would like to tell people whereas the first reference we can tell with assurance that yes it is in the context of vishwamitra and trishanku the second one could be could be not and i'm going to give you something in support of it and something against it okay this is how guys we do the research satyena labhya tapasa yesha atma we are in the search of a truth we are not in the search of putting some imaginary position or some specific position as the only position no if it is only backed by evidence and it is better than all other positions then we take that as the best approximation to the truth to satya to satology okay so this second one has no mention of a vishwamitra by the way so therefore by default just as a taken for granted we cannot take it now this has caused a double delusion double delusion what is the double delusion one thing is people think this is related to vishwamitra and trishanku that is one possible delusion for the second reference and the second thing is they can look at this verse because it is in mahabharat and can use to determining that determine the timing of mahabharat that is also a disaster because it is in the mahabharat it has nothing to do with the timing of mahabharat and that's what i'm going to explain okay what happens if you for a minute now aditya ji let's assume that this uh, whatever these uh, so called mahabharata researchers are saying is correct for a minute so what are they saying hey this is in mahabharat ashwamedha parva shravishta as the first nakshatra and shishira as the beginning of a rutu so let's start from our time because mahabharat happened in the past so now we are going to go in the past 
So what they did, lo and behold, this is, people will not believe this, but this is the kind of research that is claimed by people and is discussed in the conferences. Well, it should be discussed in conferences, but there should be some intelligent people who should able to say this doesn't make sense and I have not seen them. Okay. Chalta hai. It's like, uh, you know, some uh, carnival is going on, you know, so everyone comes, says it's something, people clap without any critical attitude and just move on to the lunchtime. Okay. So uh, what is this saying? So Shravishta as the first nakshatra and Shishira Rutu, which is the point of winter solstice as the first point. So starting with ourselves, going backward, if we go and try to match the nakshatra shravana with the point of winter solstice, which is the beginning of a shishira rutu, as said in this verse, what do we find? We will go to approximately 300 BCE. So which is what? More than 2000 years ago, 2300 years ago, 2500 years ago. Okay. That is when as if the Mahabharat happened, if somebody uses this to determine that the Mahabharat happened. Guys, that's what the outcome is. Now, if somebody insists that this is a reference, then they should also accept the outcome. They will not accept, then they know how disaster it is. Then they will start talking about the part of it, the interpolation and all kinds of nonsense. Still refusing to do the required tapasya to go and understand the context of this verse, which I'm going to show you. But before that, let's look at a, another reference. If you don't accept, so nobody is going to say Mahabharat happening in 300 BC. I don't know anyone from the Indian tradition. Now, if you go to Columbia and Harvard and California, Berkeley, Chicago, you will find many. Okay. But we are not talking about the utterly clueless folks. Okay. So we are talking about somebody who has bothered to read Mahabharat, who understands at least some uh, aspect of Mahabharat and has some sense for the antiquity of Indian civilization. And understands if somebody says 300 BC, then the person should know what kind of mess he or she is getting into. These people will just carelessly say something and move on to the next thing. Okay. Now, if it's not 300 BC, Going back in the past, what is the next possibility? The next possibility is we have to go through the complete cycle of the procession to again get Shravana matching with the day of winter solstice. Okay, either 300 BC or we have to go back by additional 26,000 years. So just crudely, I put it there, you know, it doesn't matter. 300 BC is like a zero BC kind of, you can say, and go back 26,000 years. So 26,000 BC, is that when the Mahabharata war happened? Who wants to claim that? So people will, Mahabharata researchers, the extra and ordinary Mahabharata researchers will carelessly, casually will claim something. And when I talk about this, then there is another group of extra and ordinary uh, Indic uh, experts, self-professed Indic experts in Facebook and Twitter, and they will start criticizing me, okay, that this guy doesn't understand it. It is for them to go back and look at these references. So the person who takes this verse as explaining the timing of Mahabharata, that person is claiming that Mahabharata happened in 300 BCE, 2,300 years ago, or it happened 26,000 BC, that's 28,000 years ago. Guys, you cannot take half portion and finally not worry about the outcome that you are producing. This is the outcome you guys are producing. If you think this reference refers to the timing of Mahabharata. Okay. Actually, what is happening, Aditya Ji? I'm giving you the reference. So just remember, this one is coming, Ashwamedha. And if you look at this, the both references, J Gorakhpur, uh, I mean, Gita Press edition, Gorakhpur edition, or the critical edition, same reference as it happens in this case. Uh, so both cases, same. But now remember the chapter, Ashwamedha 44 chapters. If you want to understand the Desha Kala Patra, the time, place, circumstances of this verse, the context of this verse, we have to go backward, reading who is saying to who. Okay, sorry. So if you go backwards, what you find is this is the Upa Akhyan that comes during the Anugita. Dashwamed Yadne is over and now Krishna is leaving for Dwarka. And Arjun tells him, uh, Krishna, just one more request. I know you told me the whole Bhagavad Gita and I listened to it and it allowed me to change my, remove my moha, nashta moha smritir labdha tat prasad dan me achita. Okay. But, and so I fought the war, we won the war, you know. Now you are leaving, 
but you know i still want to because that was like a tough time there you know a lot of stress i want to listen to all that wisdom that you told on uh, on the battlefield now again that bhagavad gita and some what krishna says is also very interesting that's not our subject today just i'll mention two points krishna says i was into i was into my zone you know like a, just like a yoga nidra but he was into full yoga you know yoga aruda aruda and in that mood he told bhagavad gita he said even i will not able to repeat my performance again just like sometime you know some lecture comes out good other lectures comes out boring <laughs> and people say hey, nilesh ji please talk like that and say well i am not able to repeat that performance you know something like this what krishna is saying he said however since you have asked the question let me tell you other relevant narrations that which imparts same wisdom or similar wisdom in that context he is narrating many historical instances historical narrations historical narration with respect to the timing of mahabharat which is 5561 bc more than 7500 years ago so some of the historical narration narration that's why i'm putting you from 35 chapter this is a discussion between arjun and vasudev krishna going on itihasam puratanam it is a ancient itihasa with respect to the timing of mahabharata that krishna is uh, telling arjun and in that context now you know he is quoting sub narrations so at one time he is quoting uh, this is a all the great sages have assembled and brahma bhagwan brahma the creator he is telling them okay this is he is telling them and in that context that particular statement that you just told you the shravan as the first nakshatra and winter solstice as the starting point it is said by brahma to the sages of referring to some very ancient times long before the timing of mahabharat just because it is in the text of mahabharat it has nothing to do with the timing of mahabharat it cannot be made use of to determining the timing of mahabharat and aditya ji i want to move on back to the trishanku story but it is related to this because many people have pulled that reference as referring to vishwamitra also but to decide the timing of uh, ramayan and also trishanku but also mahabharat now what is a plausible solution back to the story of trishanku uh, what about if shravana not at the winter solstice what about the shravana nakshatra as the summer solstice now here is another story aditya ji so this one so now i have put shravan so sun is at the summer solstice and the nakshatra of the sun at that time as seen from the earth is a shravan so if we take this now remember which verse i'm taking i'm not taking the verse from the uh, ashwamedha parva because that has the shishira rutu connected with it i am now simply taking the story of a vishwamitra as explained in the adi parva and we will quickly refer to from ramayan and prati shravana purvani with a shravan as the first nakshatra vishwamitra created prati srishti again first take away all the ideas that prati srishti as in like another universe no we are simply talking of vishwamitra creating another calendrical system another astronomy nakshatra system not new nakshatras i am going to explain that in a few minutes okay uh, so what if instead of the winter solstice point of winter solstice what if we take uh, the point of summer solstice i will not go into the detail because i have it is a it is a it is a much more detailed explanation that cannot be done on the show like this i will encourage people to read my the mahabharat book when did the mahabharat war happened and also the historic rama about the dating of ramayana no need to read bhishma nirvan to understand this but the first two books and you will see how i have shown that the plausible timing of trishanku could be 13000 bc which is to say what 15000 years ago which is what approximately 1000 years before ramayana this is what i wrote in the mahabharat book more than 12 years ago this is what i wrote in the ramayan book now lo and behold again as i said i love when people quote my work and actually i encourage people to do it again as a courtesy they should mention my name that is like a common a social courtesy but i am not uh, insisting uh, that's not my requirement at all as long as you are speaking the truth and you are not twisting my words but some mahabharata researchers or some ramayana researchers some indic researchers very interestingly they take this reference 
13,000 BC, 15,000 years ago, as the timing of Trishanku, they mention that in their lectures, but they do not acknowledge where it came from. And there is a reason why they don't acknowledge. Because if they acknowledge uh, that it is my original uh, inference, then they get into bigger trouble. Because the way I have drawn this inference, I will not go into the details. It is there in my two books. Related to the fall of Abhijit. Abhijit Spardamana tu Rohini Kanisha Swasa Ichanti Jeshtata Devi Tapas Taptum Vanamgata. This is a reference from Mahabharata. In that context, I decided the timing of the fall of Abhijit. And using that reference, I came to this timing of uh, Trishanku. This is a plausible timing. Okay. I'm not saying this is 100% certain because the evidence is very scant. Okay. But this is possible, very much possible because it definitely qualifies the condition. Multi it qualifies multiple conditions. It's before Ramayana, which is required. Trishanku is before Ramayana. It also has to have a Shravana nakshatra at either a cardinal point or beginning of a season. Uh, that uh, is the square that is satisfied and then we have a fall of abhijit context and that is also useful let's move on now non plausible solutions okay so shravana at a vernal equinox for example in the meantime you can also find a time between uh, mahabharat and ramayan that we can find a nakshatra uh, did I say it right? I, I, by, I made a mistake here. At a vernal equinox, I said. Actually, it should be autumnal equinox. Okay. So, for example, Shravan nakshatra at the autumnal equinox, for example. You can, you can possibly do that. And that timing comes to like a 6683 BC. Okay. Now, what is the problem with that? Uh, the problem is this is long time after Ramayana and therefore, it cannot be. Again, through Adityaji, with this discussion, I'm also sharing something bigger. Yes, it's the story of Trishanku and all that we are doing, but it is how a research is done. Okay, how methodical, how precise you need to be, how logical you need to be in excluding the possibilities, including the possibilities, but also uh, just using the right amount of confidence. So I said 13,000 BC. I mean, I said it, it's in my book. It's a plausible solution. Okay. Am I 100% certain? No, because there is no sufficient evidence about the Trishanku to uh, do a multi point validation, like a you know, triangulation, quadrangulation. It just the evidence is not there. But we know that this is not possible. Now let's look at uh, another plausible solution. Okay. Just going to mention that we'll quickly go to Ramayan and we'll stop. Now, what about that the Shravana at a autumnal equinox, but I'm making a catch. See, just before I said here, the Shravana at the autumnal equinox as seen from the northern hemisphere is not going to cut, cut the characteristics, cut the test, uh, is not going to pass the test because the timing that we arrive at is after Ramayana. Therefore, we have to discard it. But now I'm suggesting Shravana at the autumnal equinox from, from the perspective of a southern hemisphere. Now, everyone should know when it is a spring for us in the northern hemisphere, it is autumn or pre-autumn, Sharada Rutu in the southern hemisphere. When it is a summer solstice, hot summer in the northern hemisphere, it is cold winter in the southern hemisphere. Okay, so think of that as the opposite. So, therefore, I said from, from the southern hemisphere perspective, Shravan at autumnal equinox, when, when does that happen? That happens uh, around 19,000. So just take that as a 20,000 BC, about 22,000 years ago. Just like 13,000 BCE is a plausible timing of uh, Trishanku. Similarly, 20,000 BC or about 22,000 years ago is also a plausible timing for Trishanku or any time before that where we can again match uh, Shravana Nakshatra as at a key cardinal point or at the beginning of a season. Okay, so we'll not go there. So what is the limit? The lowest limit is 13,000 BC. Trishanku, we can say with 100% confidence that was definitely was not there. The Trishanku, Vishwamitra, the Trishanku of that narration, ancient Itihasa, definitely did not occur any time after 15,000 
uh, years in the last 15,000 years or any time after 13,000 BC. That we can say with the confidence. As to when exactly it happened, we don't know. It could be around that 15,000 years ago or could be 22,000 years ago as I'm showing here. Now, look, what is it? The, the sun is at the point of a Shravana nakshatra as seen in the northern hemisphere. But exactly this is the time if you look from Australia or Argentina or South Africa, what you're going to realize is it is the uh, point of autumnal equinox there. Okay. And could that be the point? Now what? Now somebody is going to say, Nilesh, yeah, this is all speculation is good. What is the evidence? I'm going to get into the evidence. And just to show that evidence, I'm going to go to the Ramayana narration. We'll just quickly finish this. I would encourage people to go to the Balakanda. Uh, chapter 60 and the chapters, few chapters before that, few chapters after to read this beautiful narration of Trishanku and Vishwamitra and Vasishta and sons of Vasishta. Fascinating. Fascinating experiments. This was the space X. Okay. Space X that is des described and discussed in ancient Itihasa Ramayana 14,000 years ago but something that happened long time before 14,000 years ago. Space X experiment done by Vishwamitra uh, with Trishanku to send a human being with a human body into the heaven. Okay. Now, when that experiment failed uh, and uh, Vishwamitra is angry, uh, but became very powerful, like look at Elon Musk, like what he's doing with Tesla and what he's doing with the Space X program, you know, something uh, in terms of technology development, amazing stuff is coming out. Similar thing, Prajapati, the creator, okay, the creator, remember, creation, okay, that's why this, the Rajoguna and the Stamoguna and Sattvoguna, the all gunas are required, you know, so that's like Vishwamitra was like a Prati Prajapati, and what did he do? He created, you know, just like we have Saptarshis in the north, he created Saptarshis in the south. It is like simple way of explaining to ordinary people. We talked about that Adityaji. He's saying, hey, just like we have Saptarshi, he also created Saptarshi there. Now, somebody literally take this in a very Balya fashion and says, okay, show me the Saptarshi is there. Oh, there are no Saptarshi to be shown. So when that discussion was happening, I said, well, I can show you the Saptarshi in the south. And the person said, yeah, really? I said, yeah. I mean, I'm going to go there near Trishanku area, which is called the constellation crux in the Western astronomy. I will, I will show you seven bright stars. They won't have the same formulation as our Saptarshis in the north. You know, I'm just, I was just saying this humorously and the person understood it. My point is he, Vishwamitra did something phenomenal for the Southern hemisphere because all the great civilization of India was happening mostly in the north and all the way to the equator. It, it's a equatorial astronomy. But Vishwamitra possibly, and there may be people before, but based on this story, we can say either Vishwamitra remapped or mapped the southern hemisphere, which is again now useful for civilizational purposes, useful for navigational purposes. So what did he do? Uh, he just created a nakshatra mala system. So for example, it will say translation, looked like another creator Brahma, overcome by anger, the illustrious sage created a new group of stars in the southern direction. Nakshatra mala, he created nakshatra mala. But remember, what the description says is, with a Shravana nakshatra as the first, he used the same nakshatra, but he created a different permutation, permutation combination, which is what I am speculating, conjecturing that... Uh, for the southern hemisphere, you know, he started that year with a sh sh what you call Sharada Rutu or the uh, autumnal equinox as the first point. Uh, whereas most of our northern Indian calendars, solar calendars begin with spring equinox as the first day. He started with Sharada equinox, which is going to still match. Okay, like now almost he created a common calendar, but in a different fashion. For the for the southern hemisphere, they have to remember. Uh, hey, it is the other way. Today, this is true. When people uh, uh, celebrate Christmas in Australia and Argentina and uh, Africa, South Africa and those areas, they have a very different feeling, you know, like all those movies, uh, um, Hollywood movies, they might be seeing with the snow and the Santa Claus, you know, they can't relate to that per se. <laughs> you know, it's very hot there at that time. So they have to understand the contrast, you know, something like this. And so he created this. And he created in the southern direction. 
Now, this is the evidence, okay? Dakshinam Disham Asthaya Muni Madhe Mahayasha. And he did it successfully. And that's why I'm saying this could be a more likely solution, possibly the timing of Trishanku going back to 22,000 BC. So, definitely 13,000 BC or 22,000 BC or sometime before that. Okay, listen this carefully. Uh, audience like you know people who listen don't come up with saying oh Nilesh said 22,000 BC and something no I said 22,000 BC is a possibility sorry 20,000 BC is a possibility 13,000 BC is a possibility before that is a possibility definitely Trishanku is not a possibility if you want to argue with me you're more than welcome as long as you have evidence and you have done your homework Trishanku was not possible is not possible in the last 15,000 years ago last sorry last 15,000 years that's how deep the antiquity of India is quickly so this is one something few more interesting uh, jewels here uh, having created a constellation of star, stars Vishwamitra out of anger said I will create another Indra or this world will be without Indra he's referring to the southern hemispheres okay and commenced to create even gods how powerful this guy is okay in the modern times in a very crude way but in a realistic way also, you can compare yourself with the ambition and the drive and the tenacity of Elon Musk. Okay, that can give you some glimpse of this Vishwamitra of a Trishanku time. Okay, and then uh, let this heaven be an eternal abode for Trishanku. Now remember, so Trishanku, all our stars have the names of what? Names of the kings, names of the sages like Saptarshi. He made Trishanku, okay, he gave a name, a particular star, the name of Trishanku. Okay, and the next star to it, you know, as if like he identified with his name or his Purohit, uh, Purohit of Trishanku. Let this heaven be an eternal abode for Trishanku in his physical form. Let me show, sorry, uh, in all these stars created by me shall endure as long as the world survives. So whenever he created 20,000 years ago, 22,000 years ago or before or 15,000 years ago. Yeah, today we can see the Trishanku. We know Trishanku. In Ramayana times, Lakshman is showing to Rama, look, our ancestor Trishanku is shining brightly as they are going from Kishkinda towards Lanka in the southern direction through Sayas and Malaya through Kerala to Nairutya Disha in the southwest direction to Lanka. Okay, so that does that. Something more and we'll stop. Now, the, finally, the Devatas also agreed, you know, now remember, this is a metaphorical way of saying this, you know, like initially right now, people may be laughing at Elon Musk. That always happens. People were laughing at me before 2011, you know, what kind of crazy thing this guy is busy with. Once it happens, people accept, people start respecting you. That's exactly what happened in this case. Now, finally, the Devatas also accepted the efforts of uh, Pratisrushti of Vishwamitra. Uh, all the gods replied to the uh, preeminent ascetic, to Vishwamitra. He says, oh, best among the sages, be blessed. Let thy will be done. We agree with you. Those many celebrated stars shall stay on all sides outside the path of Vaishwanara. What is the path of Vaishwanara? The path of the sun. Imam Vivashwate Yoga, you know, that Vaishwanara, because of that, it's a representation of a sun. It is sun. The path of the sun, away from the path of the sun, yeah, it can be fine. And actually, if you look at where Crux is, where Trishanku star is, it's far away from the ecliptic. Amidst those stars, Trishanku shining brilliantly like an immortal shall stay on, head down. They gave their agreement. You know, that's what happens. In science also, first they uh, laugh at you. Then they say critical, they criticize you. Then they say it's not important. Uh, the guy is like, uh, you know, clueless. And then finally, when they lose all these options, then they say, see, I told you, I told, actually, I gave that date. You know, I had proved 5561 BC before on the dating, uh, on the uh, weekday sequence. Nobody was talking openly. I mean, there were few, but in openly. Now that uh, I gave a talk, uh, I have the appendix in my Ramayana book. Now, Pracham created a short video on it. Now, everyone wants to say that, yeah, I have shown that, uh, uh, you know, the sequence of the weekday sequence came uh, from an Indian astronomy. Now, everyone wants to talk about it, you know, <laughs> openly. So, so, that thing will happen. Very interesting. Uh, very, very perfect astronomically how it is done. We can see the Trishanku particular star. It is in the crux constellation for the people who are familiar with Western astronomy. I'm done. Um, three books. Uh, for today's uh, 
discussion. If you want to know more, you want to read the two books on the right, the historic Ramayana, when did the uh, Mahabharata war happen? Even better, of course, read this, but better is to actually read the Valmiki Ramayana and the original, Balakanda chapter 60 and the chapters around that. Uh, very scant references in Mahabharata. No need to read Bhishma Nirvan for the story of Atrishanku. And if you are in India, you can go to subhupublications.com, order the books. Uh, it, you know, they will. If you are in India, do not need to buy from Amazon because they are going to cost you more. Um, but buy from Subhu Publication. The quality is better, okay, and uh, the cost is going to be substantially less. So with that, I'm going to stop. And back to you, Aditya ji. You know, what a wonderful presentation. And Tirshanku is also the first story of uh, narcissism. You know, the people say narcissism tendency, it is Tirshanku. Yeah. And, and <laughs> for Tirshanku and also for Vishwamitra. Vishwamitra also took a challenge, like saying, I want to do it and not give up, right? When Vasishta is saying, not worth, not worth doing it. And Vasishta's sons. Yes. Good, good example. Yeah. And uh, and also Vishwamitra, I won't say anything because he met Sri Ram. <laughs> so I will just stay away. Yeah, well, this Vishwamitra is different than the one who met Sri Ram, right? Correct. correct. But again, but see, let's not, I mean, in the story, the idea is not to put down this Vishwamitra. Yes. Actually, very fascinating the tenacity and the confidence. And at the, looking at the bigger story, some, some foolish person may say, oh, he failed. But if one has to have a uh, what you call stable attitude stable way of thinking to understand a lot of successes he created in the right. process right and also the the like he did tapasya for 10000 years mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, you know if you want to say vishwamitra fell down then do tapasya for 10000 years <laughs> <laughs> correct do tapasya for 10 years you 10 know years. one year yeah. one month you know, it is difficult because even even for one month, if we call people and, you know, the, everyone talks about Kriya Yoga, but they forgot about the Tapa, Swadhyay and uh, Ishwar Pranidhan. You know, these three things are essential. And before you can begin to subdue your vritti, which is the science behind it. My new book is coming out, so I'm more in tune with this one. You are into it. You are into, into it. it. You're into, into the it. zone of into that. The zone yeah. right now. Yeah, and uh, so thank you so much, Nilesh ji. As usual, a wonderful presentation, and believe me, these kind of topics add value. And uh, you know, just learning. I mean, you know, the the thing is, today's current events are to be acted upon, not to be meditated upon. Meditation yes. has to be on yoga and Bhagavad Gita and Mahabharat Ramayana. And and but we are discussing this, Aditya ji, so that. Uh, people can imbibe the lessons, insights, okay, and confidence for today, for for achieving that abhyudaya and nishreyas today and for future, upcoming future and a long term future. Okay, we'll talk about the uh, ecology aspect in another another subject too. You know, like a kalpa, why why it's important. And and the 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 if you keep thinking about the current events you will not be able to think about the future mm. because you're missing out the present now because uh, so many of the YouTube shows which I see, they just push people into just current awareness. Yeah. That is not general knowledge. You know, general knowledge, you need five minutes. Like uh, Nireji was saying in a private conversation to me, then many of the videos I he understands everything in two minutes. And generally true for everybody. Anyone yeah, I watch one hour video in like two, three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> that answer you are trying to do. Abhi bolna kya chata hai? Bol. <laughs> <laughs> well, now we should we should say we can be. I mean, pe people uh, people uh, charge us with the same thing. Like, why why don't you get to the point? And just a quick response to that is getting to the point is not difficult. In fact, if they want to see how to quickly get to the point, they should read my books. Yes. Okay. In um, Mahabharata, there are 75 uh, error elimination experiments. Each experiment is a point. Now, when I do that, many people, not all, many people do understand it beautifully. They will say, I don't understand anything. Now, then we need, uh, then Aditya ji and Nilesh has to come together and discuss this to make it easy. Easy. 
like yeah. before giving a baby you know we make it soft mush it nicely and then give it in the mouth it is like this this is the process guys you know then the or you know everybody is talking about job creation the political leaders also need to learn raj vidya raj vidya doesn't refer to vidya of how to rule hmm. that is mentioned in arth shastra raj vidya means the knowledge of yog is called raj vidya yes. so the if you do not follow that then how will you able to decide what is the current situation how the people are confused about swadharma how the people are confused about uh, vritti you know self analysis has to be there before you can understand the current situations better like after writing all the other books i wrote gold glory and god because to give a context what happened mm. and but now and that too that was it i mean i did not cover everything over there i am very honest but i just connected the trends important stories otherwise but today's world needs uh, is nothing has changed this same thing has happened in different kali yuga also this has happened in different treta yuga also the upper yuga had also challenges and their challenges were bigger than or more important during that time yeah. world is going to go away dukhala hai mashashatam correct you know so, so correct. the the point is get out of this cycle of karm bandhan that yeah. is the most important thing yeah and i'll just add because you said that the cyclic nature of it um people have to understand when the history repeats it doesn't repeat exactly in the same way like we right. know some people have this uh, vague and wrong notion that ramayana happens again in the sense of exactly ram comes and then ravan comes and takes away sita no that is actually a misunderstanding based on the a western understanding of a cyclical time like right. they didn't have a understanding of cyclical time they understood from india but in in the process of understanding from the east they messed it up saint augustine okay he get into a perfect cycle my point is when history repeats it is to be understood in this fashion what vishwamitra did 15000 years ago or 22000 years ago is what elon musk is doing in a in a now in that sense the history repeats but he is not vishwamitra okay his senses are not controlled so, so well I... vishwamitra also faced uh, something similar that vishwamitra faced during that time you know and we we see that and that is way way of a devatas to also make him realize too as much as they accepted his greatness like you know we have nobody will have a problem understanding the dynamism of elon musk you know so the devatas accepted it but devatas also did their acts to tame vishwamitra including indra and and uh, today some hindu leaders are saying forget about devi devta for next 50 years <laughs> i i see i don't listen to present news so i don't know who is saying what <laughs> yeah i will not take the name people understand yeah. so people are saying you know devi devta ko bhul jayenge to saans kaise loge how will you forget how will you breathe if you forget devi devta why you how you forget Correct. so then which, which means people should know what devatas are devatas are i mean the water department air department rains everything is controlled by them correct us government is not controlling thing public God. public works department you know <laughs> transport <laughs> the entire is you know the biggest source of uh, removing pollution is mother earth hmm. because the most uh, carcin or urea chemicals uh, you know the worst chemicals are buried not thrown in the water yeah because the water goes everywhere else it going to pollute everything so we have to start respecting devi devta for what they give us and not forget them and uh, you know there is no bharat varsh without devi devta so yeah so and there I is no I, there won't be prithvi there won't be really? gaya there won't be go you know yes, without yes. without what you just said yeah very true thank you so much and namaste as usual very enlightening as well as entertaining for me personally i enjoy these kind of shows Uh, namaskar thank you all for viewers watching namaskar do like subscribe and share namaskar